Hello everyone and uh, welcome to today's webinar on chatbots. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to the folks joining from different parts of the globe. My name is Noor Basha, Marketing Director at Minvaya Technologies and I'll be your moderator for today's webinar. So today's topic for the session is uh, modern collaboration using Microsoft chatbot framework. So in the next 45 minutes, uh, we will learn about uh, how chatbots powered by conversational AI are transforming modern workplace, uh, different use cases, and also a quick demo in terms of how you can build the enterprise chatbot. Before we start, let me highlight a few housekeeping items. Uh, do uh, please feel free to post questions and we will try to answer as many as we can at the end. And we are recording this session and we'll share the recording and presentation in next 24 to 48 hours. So with that, uh, let me introduce you to today's session speaker, uh, Madan. Uh, he's the technical architect at Minvaya Technologies and brings over 15 years of experience in the IT industry. So at Winware, he's uh, specialized in managing, uh, designing, and deploying Microsoft uh, cloud solutions, which includes both an on-prem cloud and hybrid solutions uh, using SharePoint, Office 365, and Azure. So with that, and without um, uh, wasting much time, let me hand it over to Madan to help us uh, walk us through uh, 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 chatbot framework. Madan, over to you. Thank you, Noor. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, greetings, uh, people who are joining across the world. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Uh, we will, you know, cover you know the topic. So, uh, one of the reasons we have you know picked this topic is uh, mainly to see how chatbots you know can help improve the collaboration to ensure that the employee productivity uh, is achieved at the highest level. Um, because a lot of times people, you know, think that chatbot probably is not for, you know, collaboration portal. You know, we just want to, you know, look at why chatbots, you know, will be relevant and, you know, in fact, more important, you know, for a collaboration uh, platform. And before we jump on to the chatbot uh, from an agenda standpoint, what we want to cover is, uh, you know, what are all the various collaboration options available in Office 365? So, um, you know, maybe whoever is you know, on the webinar, maybe you guys can you know, uh, probably you know, uh, put a number, you know, how many different collaboration tools are available in Office 365, if uh, anyone can, you know, give it a guess. Uh, you know, I know, you know people are on Office 365, uh, maybe, you know, for the past few years. So any, you know, number you can, you know, put in the chat window. How many different collaboration options are available? That would be great. I'll answer the question, you know, in the next slide, um, and then, and then we'll talk about a overview of chatbot and guidelines for designing a chatbot. No, not specific to Microsoft, but you know, in general industry terminology standpoint, you know, what what are the guidelines? And uh, jumping onto the Microsoft world again, talking about Microsoft uh, bot framework architecture, and we will also look at a demo of a chatbot. Uh, the demo is you know, based on SharePoint, but leveraging the Azure and you know, Chatbot no framework. And Q and A is you no know, uh, at the end, uh, just because we have you know, limited time for this uh, webinar. And I will try to keep the Q and A. But if there are pressing questions, keep posting them, and uh, Noor will you now ask me those questions uh, as and when are relevant. Right. The first uh, part is collaboration options available in Office 365. Um, I don't know if I'll, I'll answer the question, but uh, you know, it, it, it's so difficult for me to answer. You know, how many different collaboration tools are available, or collaboration options are available in Office 365? Because uh, Microsoft, you know, keeps building and adding new tools and new new feature set for each of the existing tools, so uh, it keeps evolving. That's what you know, I would say. Uh, anyone who is following Microsoft World and then especially the Microsoft Teams plays a you know, vital role now and uh, you know any webinar any conference you know I attend from Microsoft I have been you know, hearing about teams for the past two years I, I would say now and uh, a lot of you have already explored it teams is one of the fast growing uh, product within in the Microsoft you know, history with you know um, so many customers already adopting to you know teams uh, teams 
uh, I'll give a brief overview about Noteam. So it's basically a, a single unified platform for you know managing all of your you know collaboration needs. You know, be it a SharePoint site in the back end or a conversation, or you know, let's say if you want to you know have a Yammer as a tab, all of that is possible using Teams. Right? Next is Power Apps. When uh, Microsoft you know, introduced um, you know Power App and just a history behind that. In 2013, Microsoft announced that InfoPath will not be supported anymore, and a lot of people who were, you know, deeply using InfoPath were kind of heartbroken, you know, to see InfoPath you know, going away. And after three years, Microsoft announced that InfoPath will be supported till 20, you know, 2026. So uh, because there was no clear alternative, you know, for InfoPath, and then um, you know, Power Apps, you know, came. I wouldn't say. It's an exact replacement of InfoPath, but it's slightly better way of you know building forms as a you know business power user. Right. So I have you know developed a lot of you know power apps uh, for connecting to different data sources, uh, building it for you know building once but deploying it on mobile and you know tablet devices. So power apps is a great tool you know, for that. Then another collaboration tool which is uh, very common, Exchange. Uh, I'm sure you know people are using Exchange you know over, over the decades, and uh, Exchange is one of the best and worst you know collaboration tool. If you use it wisely, yes, that's the best you know platform you know for collaboration. But uh, people keep you know getting hundreds of emails in a day where you know they are not able to process that much amount of you know uh, emails in a day. Right. So if you use it efficiently and wisely, uh, Exchange is the better option. Flow. Uh, for you to you know connect with any of the data sources, let's say even if you want to connect to Twitter handle, if you want to you know connect to let's say Salesforce, all of that is, is possible using you know Flow. Uh, you know from your document library or from your list, you know, you'll be able to you know build a flow and connect to any of these data sources and then you know, create a simple you know, workflow. Right? It's all business user you know, driven. Uh, no longer you know IT is needed for creating these flow. Uh, a business power user will be able to do that with a little bit of you know training. SharePoint Online, um, you know, I don't need to talk about SharePoint Online. How SharePoint you know helps in uh, collaborating. Uh, it, it's been talked over a million number of times already. And Office Online Apps, uh, this is a great tool. You know, let's say Word or PowerPoint. Uh, you know, a lot of new features are introduced. A lot of times, you know, co-authoring is talked. And co-authoring is talked too many number of times, so I'll probably now switch to newer uh, features introduced in SharePoint conference last month. So uh, Office Online Apps even lets you, let's say, if you're working on a Word document and uh, you have to embed a slide from a PowerPoint, uh, now Word Online gives you an option to search. And let's say if you find that particular you know, PowerPoint you're looking for, you can directly click on that slide and then embed them within the Word document without leaving Word. You don't have to physically open a PowerPoint and then copy that in a slide. Rather, you know, you get a search pane open on the right hand side where you can just you know drag and drop that particular you know, slide. Right. So those are all the great features available. Then um, you know one way for business, pretty similar to SharePoint, but you know, uh, a lot of you know file storage management. Project online for project portfolio management or even a project management, building reports and dashboards uh, and KPIs and all, all those stuff. Streams, streams has a lot of you know improvements you not know, done. If you are on a low bandwidth versus you know, high bandwidth, you know, it automatically detects your bandwidth you know speed and then you know changes the quality of the video so that you know, you, you are able to you know, browse the video. Right? And you can do a text search. Uh, and you know, figure out which particular you no know, minute that particular you no know, text was you know, spoken. Yammer for internal and external collaboration. I have used Yammer for more of external collaboration with partners and you know customers, but uh, even for internal collaboration, Yammer is used. Dell uh, and Office Graph. It kind of you know it, it provides a great visibility for me. You know what my team is working on, what my coworker is you know, working on, all that. Planner. Uh, for simple event management kind of uh, you know activities, Planner is the best tool you know to use it. Now, if I ask you a question, you know which collaboration option 
as a business user you know you need to choose um, you know it is so difficult because um, as a technologist it is easier for us to follow and in fact it is getting tougher for even a technologist to follow the speed at which microsoft is building and providing various collaboration capabilities so you know for a business user who is focusing more let's say on a client based you know department or maybe a research scientist someone you know, who is so much into their you know world it is so difficult for them to figure out which collaboration option is you no know, right choice for them right just because it's too many options and uh, uh, most of them are self servicing tools so it's either no training or very little training for them and uh, you know those are all the reasons a lot of times the collaboration portals you know fail just because it's more technology focused versus rather than a business you know focus right that's why bot comes into you know play uh, you have you know bot a single bot or multiple small bots you now i'll talk about that you know, in detail and uh, you know you have the bot help the users to find information or you know find some you know help on performing some day to day activities let's uh, look at a uh, overview of uh, chatbot uh, you know there are two different terms uh, i know it it's used synonymously in most of the cases uh, but uh, just thought we'll we'll put a difference between a bot and a chatbot so bot is more of you know it, it's a simplified you know form of a robot it is used for anything any repetitive task which a human will feel irritated and then you know, start making mistakes that's when you know you develop a bot to you know to perform those repeated tasks uh, whereas a chatbot is more of a conversational engine which kind of simulates more of a you know a human you know as if you know you're talking to a human and the format in which you know you may be interacting is either a text or voice or even you know some simple you know card adaptive cards so i'll talk about adaptive cards uh, later there are three different types you know i can think of uh, when we implement chatbots one is an informational bot uh, which is more of you know which is more of you know based you know functions based on commands let's say you ask something and then the bot you know gives you back that no information right so that's the first type of a bot people go crazy and then you know call this as a stupid bot a dumb bot command based bot all that you no know, different names if you hear it it's basically an informational bot uh, just because it is trained to do you know x number of activities it is trained to respond to x number of queries and it can respond only to those you know x number of new queries right if you ask anything more it will say you know i don't think you know i understand the second bot is more of an enterprise you know great you know bot uh, this is where you know the bot leverages cognitive services azure cognitive services and the machine learning in the back end and it keeps learning itself right you know from the earlier responses let's say there is an sme allocated to that you know uh, bot training it learns from all of that it learns from your data sources it learns from your you know previous questions and answers and you know it, it keeps learning you know you can build the intelligence of the bot leveraging let's say you know you can you know have a language understanding you can you know introduce all the other you know capabilities you know from cognitive services to help this you know bot that's a you know enterprise you know great you know bot and then the third type um is a virtual assistant i i kind of you know debate whether or not it can be categorized under a bot or you know in microsoft world it is categorized under a bot but in a general industry term virtual assistants are looked slightly different from bot because virtual assistants are designed to do designed to kind of you know perform anything you know you want them to do let's say i want to book a ticket right now i want to book a you know table for my you know restaurant in my you know restaurant so all of that you know is possible and then all of you would have been familiar with alexa or you know siri and cortana all of that right so everything is a virtual assistant you know it, you don't have a limit of you know what you want to ask your virtual assistant right you now you want a meaning of a particular word you can ask that you now you want a particular book is that book available in amazon or not 
right? All of that is is you know kind of a responsibility of a virtual assistant. Right? But if you think of designing a bot, you don't want to be thinking about you know virtual assistant, you know, which can do anything and everything. In terms of bot, you'll have to be specific to a use case, right, from an enterprise standpoint. I always you know, like to go back in history and then you know, look at uh, you know how the bot is evolved. A lot of times when I talk to even technology experts, you know, they say, "Oh, bot is very new in in the market." Right? Maybe last five years or maybe you know last in the last decade is when you know the bots started coming in. I would kind of you know, disagree. The the very first bot came in around 1950. It's more of a Turing test. Um, you know, we can always you know, have a follow-up conversation to know about all of these. Uh, but in the interest of time, you know, I'll probably not switch. Eliza, which is you know, which is released on 1966, is one of the you know important milestone I would say in the bot evolution. Um, and then you know, there are various other uh, vendors came up with the bot you know, idea. And then in 2006, which was a major breakthrough when IBM you know, released the Watson Assistant. That was, you know, one of the major, you know, breakthrough. And then, you know, we have Siri, Google Now, Slackbot, Alexa, and Cortana, and then, you know, Facebook Messenger bots, everything. Right? There are so many different organizations, you know, using bots in different ways now. Why bot is not relevant, right, you know, for a collaboration portal? One thing, you know, we need to be uh, understanding is even a social networking, you know, platform is surpassed by messaging apps, um, you know, few years back, not now, but it's, it's actually five, six years you know, back, messaging apps have surpassed all the social networking. And that tells clearly, you know, why Facebook in invested $19 billion in, you know, acquiring, you know, WhatsApp, right, which is a very small company based on messaging you know, platform. You know, Facebook invested a huge, uh, you know, lumps them on that. And uh, in terms of bot, why is it, you know, why the bots are relevant? Bot gives you a much, you know, faster response rate. It's, I can, you know, quickly search and get only what I need, right? Um, this is where the search and bot, you know, differs. You know, when you search for something, let's say you have 20 different, you know, responses, and also, it gives me, you know, you may also like, right? I'm like, you know, today I don't want to, you know, worry about anything else. I need exactly this piece of information, right? That's when, you know, bot gives you a very specific uh, response. And then um, the enhanced employee experience. Let's say, how many people, you know, have heard, oh, we are experiencing, you know, if you call a customer center, you know, we are experiencing a high call volume. Right, uh, your call is very important to us, and all that. You know, if you have heard, and if you hate that, yes, you know, bot is the alternative, you know, for you. And um, service repeated R. Right? How long you're open today? Let's say if you have a restaurant, and you know, how long you're open today? And you know, do you deliver to home? Do you deliver to office? And where are you located? What are the directions? Those are all kind of you know typical questions you keep hearing on your phone line. You want to know, you may want to you know focus on something else, which is you know more helpful. So uh, you can service those repeated asks using a bot and chatbots. Just you know, it, 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 it's interesting you know to see all the leading cloud vendors. There are some companies you know who do dedicated you know to bots only i'm not talking about them but i'm just talking about leading cloud vendors in the market and you know, how they are uh, um, you know servicing the bots ibm watson you know, has assistant amazon has lex and uh, dialog flow is acquired by google and that's a bot framework engine for google and then microsoft has its own you know, bot framework as well Let's look at you know what are the generic industry guidelines for designing a chatbot. And uh, before you learn about the guidelines, you know it's always good to learn all these jargons. There are many of them, but you no, know, I've just you no know, quoted only few of them. 
let's say utterance you know anything the user utters is an utterance and what do they want to do you know what is their intent that's that's called intent and entity let's say um, and then nlp and nlu natural language and you know, processing and understanding there are various channels in which you can communicate there's a q and a maker uh, this maap and caap is more around messaging as a platform and conversation as a platform so people keep throwing jargon at you whenever you know you talk about chatbots so you need to be knowing about all of these you know, terminologies human handout that's one of the important feature you know when a bot notices that the person on the other end is getting frustrated the bot needs to have an intelligence to kind of you know turn you know escalate it to a human to take over the conversation right so that's a very important you no know, step that's why you know the bot success versus you know failure you know comes into you know, play the bot needs to be knowing you know having an intelligence to hand up to human at the right time there are various case studies you know public you know case studies are available and you know few of them i just want to you know highlight whole foods um you know it's an informational bot you can go into the whole foods you no know, app and uh, you know use the chat bot to find the recipes find you know anything you know you need you know, in terms of recipes uh, spotify the music uh, you know legend you know they provide option to search a specific you know music type left uh, this this is not an informational bot this is more of a transactional or a next level ai based bot you know where you can use this to book a taxi pizza hut lets you search and order pizza so it, it is a combination of informational bot where it lets you search um, and also order a pizza whenever you, know, you think of designing a bot there are three different you know funda you, know, you need to always remember have a single purpose you know, don't look at all of these uh, fancy bots if you refer to the first bot always think about you know building it you know as a step by step process have a single purpose and identify all the use cases you know you want to achieve but take a single use case and you know, start implementing it phase out the you know rest of the you know use cases and build a mechanism to escalate as needed escalate when i say it's a human escalation from bot transitioning it to no a human in a smoother way and when you are designing a bot first time you will always you know you should always ex expect you know some kind of hiccups not everything will go as planned not every you know question from the user will be responded in a way you expect right for example this particular you know, bot you know the user is you know trying to say you know the bot is trying to ask you know what city you are traveling to right the user is saying okay i want to cancel and you know the bot keeps trying to you know book you know <laughs> the travel right so this is something that you may want to avoid this is a learning another thing is the clueless bot and you know the bot is asking for a code and the user doesn't understand what does a code mean and user is asking for a help the bot thinks help is a code user wants to enter right and this is another bot where the bot doesn't forget you know what exactly happened 3 months back the user originally wanted to travel to vegas 3 months back and the bot is kind of you know, remembering all of that information right so those are all the things you want to always avoid in terms of you know phase wise rollout now i talked about phase wise rollout let's say you know there is an internal versus external you know bot external facing you know bot you know you are developing let's say uh, there is a features of service plan a right you are a you know provider of let's say for an insurance you know there is a service plan a then you know you start building what is the you know account information so you start you know looking for that features and then let's say you start adding 
account lookup as another you know, feature, right, which is transactional. Then, then build another phase to make sure that make sure to go in in an advisory role. Let's say, what will I gain if I move from plan A to plan B? Right? And similar similar for an internal, how do I get the leave policy? Right? And start delivering them in multiple channels. You know, let's say you have teams. You have Skype for Business. You have, let's say, um, SharePoint. So you start, you know, del delivering those, delivering the same thing in multiple channels, and start making it as transactional. Let's say you want the internal users to uh, look at all the tasks assigned to them or pending with them, and have them approve those, you know, workflows. That will be, you know, that could be your next, you know, transactional step. Let's look at the Microsoft you know, Bot framework architecture coming into the Microsoft you know, world. This is a typical architecture. You know, nowadays there are various devices. Your mobile and tablets are not only the devices. Your car could be a device. Your home could be a device, right? So there are various devices people are using, and the people are providing inputs in in different manners. You know, it, it's either text or it could be a speech, or it could be a tap, or it could be a card, adaptive card. And uh, people use various channels to interact. Let's say email, Skype, Twitter, you know, any other text messaging you know, platform, Teams, all of that. Right? And then in the backend, this is all you know from a user standpoint. And Azure Bot Service you know, connects all of these inputs in various types of inputs to set up cognitive services. The cognitive services, you know, starting from language understanding, like, you know, you're having a Spanish user, you know, talking to the bot, uh, you know, it understands that. And it, it understands, you know, to translate and then translate them back when the response is you know, given. And uh, Q&A, right, and speech, vision, all of those cognitive services. And then it can interact with various knowledge repositories. You don't want to you know, dump all the knowledge you have in your in organization. You don't want to dump all of them. So you want to you know, connect to those knowledge repositories to get the responses for certain you know, questions. There could be some third party assistance you may want to integrate with, and there could be some skills you may want to you know, build. Uh, I'll talk about the skills in the next you know, couple of you know, slides. I want to you know, have a dedicated you know, slide for the skill. We'll talk about it. Let's look at the channels you know, available. Um, there are you no know, various channels available, starting from um, you know Cortana, Skype for Business, Teams, Skype, and all of them, right? And there are some channels which provide the channel-specific functionality. One of the example I can give is, let's say, on an uh, you know email, right? You can email you know to a bot and you know get a response. You know what is the status of my invoice? Right. So that's something that now you can develop a you know specific platform specific functionality. Those you know for Slack, Kick, Telegram, Facebook, uh, Facebook Messenger, and you know email, there are uh, you know Microsoft Bot framework provide option to build a specific functionality. This is you know uh, slightly modified version of the architecture I showed in the initial you know, slide about the bot framework architecture. It basically you know, gives the details of all the different you know, virtual assistants you know, available. The main purpose of this slide is to you know, ensure that you don't need to dump all the middle words you, know, you have created to interact with your knowledge repository. You can you know, leverage them, in fact, to get the information needed by the bot. Right. So you don't have, you don't want to you know, dump all the APIs and everything you know you built. Um, you know, bot framework. You know, the code can actually talk to those you know middle layers and you know get the information you, know, you need. In the backend, there are various cognitive services starting from Lewis translators, Q and A maker, and you know content you know modulation and all of that. 
skills. So um, I'll, I'll take an example and then I'll, um, maybe I'll try to explain. There are various skills provided by Microsoft out of the box. Uh, you can also develop custom skills. One of the, you know, you know, bot provided by Microsoft is, you know, IT bot and HR bot. I'll give some example. Let's say you want to learn about a lead policy. You want to know, learn about, um, let's say, you know, the IT help desk, you know, information. You can leverage those out of the box in a bot. And um, one of the custom bot, let's say, I want to, at any point in time, I want to you know, find out when is John Doe available next, right, in the next, you know, three days. You can leverage a skill, uh, a custom skill for that, and then you know have that integrated with your bot, so that the bot can kind of you know, respond to such questions as well. When you are designing a first bot, you know do not worry about how smart the bot is and how much the natural language it can process and all that. You know forget about all of that. Focus more on users' you no know, problem. You know, can the bot solve the user problem easily? Can it solve, you know, better than the alternate option the user has? Right. Those are all the things you know you need to care about. And you know, is it rendered in all the devices? Is it you know, served in all the devices? You know, they care about. That's where you know you have to you know, focus more. A simple uh, step about. You know, how do you want to build your roadmap? Start, you know, you start with a simple, very simple thing, you know, start, send and receive text messages, right? That's, a, you know, very first step. And then maybe, you know, add a QA and a maker to it. Then start adding your buttons and medias and, you know, natural cards and natural understanding. And then, you know, start thinking about, you know, user interaction. This is how, you know, I would, you know, recommend rather than directly jumping onto some, you know, designing something as complex like a virtual assistant, start simple, take a step by step approach, and you know, start simple and then you know, move on. We'll have you know, we'll look at a quick demo of um, a simple in you know, a bot. I want you know, start with a simple QA maker. Um, so, you want to log into QA maker.ai. That's a platform, you know, for uh, you know managing your QA maker. I have, you know, already some existing knowledge bases which I have, you know, already you know created. But for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to be you know creating a new knowledge base. Creating a knowledge base has five different, you know, steps. Uh, I need to you know create a QA service, which is created in Azure. And once I create a QA service, I need to be able to connect that to my knowledge base. And then I need to give a name, populate the knowledge base, and then, you know, and then finally, you know, create, create my KB, right, the knowledge base. So I will start with the QA maker, QA maker service. At the end of the day, you know, everything. Translate back into Azure, your Azure subscription. So you need to have an Azure subscription. Let me name it as Azure Webinar. I'm just now going to choose I want to put them in my a specific resource group. And I can, you know, choose what pricing I want to choose and which location I want to you know, host that service. I, you know, when you create it, you may want to you know always enable your app inside so that you now you kind of you know you can track what is going on. And uh, you know, based on your location, you, know, you can always you know, choose uh, which you know location you, know, you want to you know, host your uh, app inside. And I click create. It takes you know, a few seconds to, you know to create it. The deployment is in progress. It 
typically you know, takes a few seconds to create uh, your you know, resources. Hopefully it works. Uh, usually it doesn't take uh, this long, but uh, whenever there is a demo, it has to be like this. I I know that. So okay, our uh, QNA Maker service is you know created. Now I can uh, go back and uh, look at my. I forgot to refresh my screen, so okay. So the web, you know, the webinar in a Q and A maker service I have created, it's available. And I want to populate my, you know, KB. I can populate it, you know, up maybe a PDF file, you know, which has all my Q and A. In a specific format, I can do that, or I can just you know I'll just you know simply pick some of the existing uh, simple KB question and answers available, and then I'm creating a KB. Oops. Okay. I cannot guess. You know, this is what will happen when you are trying to you not know, do a demo. So I have some um, existing services you know I have already you know created. So basically, when you create uh, when you create a Q and A maker, these are all the things you know it gets you know created. You know it, it creates the cognitive service, it creates an app service plan, it creates the app service. If you choose to um, create an app insights, it also creates an app insights service, and then it creates a search service and these are all the you know, things you know it creates automatically, and then the next step I will have to do is creating a bot. Uh, you can create a bot. Obviously, you know you can create go, go to new and search for a bot. Web app bot is what you now you will create it. And uh, when you create it, you now you want to you know make sure that you are choosing the specific uh, service you created. As as the one you know you need to you know connect this particular you number. Know, so I'll probably you know leave it you know here and then move on to the SharePoint you know site where I have integrated my bot. The simple SharePoint you know site you know, which is used for uh, collaboration in in a corporation, and uh, I have the bot showing up. And uh, I start with some of the basic questions. So it kind of you know understands uh, you know I it, I built the Q and A in a manner that you know, it kind of you know understands all of those you know, questions. Um, as a user, let's say, you know, I want to you know, get the leave policy. So, okay. So it gives me the option, you know, where I can, you know, find the leave policy. Um, you know, it depends on how you want to build your, uh, you know, Q and A. Uh, in this, you know, case, the 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 best way, you know, it it worked out is. You create multiple smaller bots. Let's say you have an IT bot, you have an HR bot, you have a finance bot. Anything related to payroll, uh, the finance bot kind of you know responds. Anything related to policies and procedures and templates, the HR bot responds. And then anything related to help help desk, you know, your IT bot will respond. But from an end user standpoint, you are not asking the end user to interact with three different bots. You're asking the end user to interact with one bot, and then this bot kind of you know, it, you know, provides interaction with you know, everyone else. Right? 
and I have also integrated you know, some of uh, my other you know, services. Let's say I want to know, check when is my next flight, right? So it kind of you know reads you know my information and you know, it is integrated with my calendar and you know it kind of you know, gives this information. That you know pretty much you know covers uh, what we wanted to you know cover in this you no know, uh, webinar, and uh, I know you know we can talk a lot about any specific you know topics you guys may have. Always reach out to marketingadwinway.com and infoadwinway.com, and you know, we'll be able to you know help with that. Uh, hey, Madan, thanks a lot for taking up uh, the session and also walking us through the quick demo. Uh, really helpful. So I have a few questions uh, coming in. The first question is from uh, uh, Michael, where he asks, uh, is Azure chatbot framework available for the government cloud or is it just uh, the private? Sure. So, um, you know, this was one of the topic, you know, discussed uh, even in the Shepon conference uh, last month, uh, Michael. So government, you know, cloud also has Azure chatbot. The only difference is that the general cloud has version four of the chatbot framework versus uh, government you know, cloud has version three of the chatbot you know, framework. That's the only difference, but uh, whatever the features I have demoed now, all of them can be, uh, you know, can be implemented using you know, version three itself. Hope this answers your question. Yeah, thanks, Manan. Thanks for that. Uh, so the other question, uh, uh, the follow-up question is, what kind of use cases typically enterprises try uh, to start up to start in order to adopt chatbots? Okay. So uh, in terms of adoption, you know, you may want to you know, pick a use case, which is, uh, you know, which is kind of you know, touching upon most of the users, not all of them, but at least you know, most of the users, and start building a bot for that right if you are uh, uh, most of the organization you know, have a common you know pro problem of okay i'm not able to find the information i'm looking for right if that is your uh, common problem you may want to you know, build a bot which can search across your repositories and then you know give you know let's say policies and procedures in a search right that can be the use case you know you may want to you know build if you are you know problem is you know more around um, you know people not approving the workflows right if that is a common problem across the organization you may want to build a bot which can help them achieve that right so it, it kind of you know, various you know depends on where is you know 80 percent of the problem and then you know start addressing that Thanks, Madan. Uh, so the other question is, uh, is it possible to integrate, uh, say, if I have a QA and a maker, uh, uh, if, we, if I can integrate with my legacy uh, data sources instead of building the knowledge repository right from the scratch? Sure, absolutely. So recently, you now we worked with a high-tech, uh, you know, manufacturing company in Bay Area, and, uh, you know, they had 80,000 uh, FAQ question and answers, right, in their, you know, repositories. There were, you know, they had like four different uh, data sources where the question and answers, you know, were there. And uh, obviously, they don't want, you know, build a complete uh, knowledge base in in Microsoft you know, Bot Framework and then copy all the questions here again, right? It doesn't make sense. So we were able to integrate with all the four different data sources and then depends on the question it automatically you know finds out which particular data source to you know get the information from yes it is possible great thanks madan thanks thanks a lot i know uh, we are almost at the end of the uh, session uh, again uh, thanks a lot for taking time to uh, walk us through this session really helpful 
uh, thanks everyone for taking time to join the session and uh, we hope you found it uh, informative and useful if you have any additional questions uh, please uh, drop us uh, email at marketing at winwire.com or info at winwire.com uh, do follow us on our uh, uh, twitter handle at winwire uh, so that you get latest information on the blogs as well as the upcoming webinars uh, thanks madan for taking time to uh, deliver this session really helpful thank you everyone everyone yeah